Horror movies can be cunning, sneaky little rascals at the best of times, be that with certain twists or turns, or in this case, with outright lies. Whether it's a totally misleading, false marketing campaign, or a film whose very plot hinges on a massive lie, a fair few porkies have been the driving theme for many a horror movie over the decades. So with that in mind, I'm Andrew from What Culture Horror, and here are 10 horror movies built on a lie. Number 10, Primeval. 2007's Primeval is about a giant crocodile causing chaos in Barone as news crews and experts have flown in to cover this story and hopefully bring the croc in alive. Only, of course, the croc affectionately known as Gustav finds himself a whole slew of more victims to munch on. However, the marketing for this movie suggested a very, very different tale. Prior to hitting cinemas, all audiences knew was that Primeval was inspired by the true story of the most prolific serial killer in history, with trailers telling us that this serial killer had amassed 300 victims, was elusive, intelligent, cunning, and to this day remains at large. And in terms of visuals, there was almost a Texas Chainsaw Massacre to the bones, colour palette and quick cuts of those trailers, and never once do we see a crocodile. If anything, the footage almost alludes to something supernatural. But no, Primeval is absolutely a killer croc feature. And as for Gustav, he is absolutely a very real crocodile in Burundi, estimated to be over 20 foot in length, weigh over 2,000 pounds, be approximately 70-ish years of age, and yes, has killed up to 300 hundred people. Number 9, April Fool's Day. Presented as a fairly run-of-the-mill slasher, 1986's April Fool's Day takes place on the secluded island estate of Muffy St. John, a well-to-do figure who invites her cousins and pals to her lavish mansion. Ever the prankster, Muffy has a few well-meaning tricks up her sleeves. Well, until the dead bodies start to pile up and it's revealed that Muffy is actually Buffy. No, not the vampire slayer, but Muffy's murderous twin, complete with Muffy's severed head being discovered. Dun dun dun. In reality, April Fool's Day is built entirely on a lie, and that's a lie that the audience doesn't become aware of until they've sat through the film's 90-minute runtime. That lie? Why, it's that Buffy actually was Muffy, and that all of the deaths were staged as one big trick, as Muffy intends to turn her mansion into a haunted house attraction, and all of her guests were somehow playing along, and it was done with Hollywood-level special effects, and yeah, it, it just makes less sense the more you think about this one. Number 8, The Fourth Kind. The Fourth Kind takes things to the extreme with its fictitious story presented as Cold Hard Truth, a mockumentary that goes to great lengths to appear as if the mock has nothing to do with it. This tale of alien abduction in Nome, Alaska claims to be based on a true story. And it is, only it's a true story that has nothing to do with alien abductions. Going so far as to construct fake true footage with real actors and to go alongside dramatic recreations, The Fourth Kind hammers home its bafflingly convincing premise of extraterrestrial terror. Only that terror is tacked onto actual accounts of missing and dead citizens of Nome, using those real tragedies to spin an alien tale that's wildly inappropriate, ultimately leading to a lawsuit brought against Universal by local Nome newspapers, plus the film being critically panned for its bad taste manipulation of the truth. Number 7, Jacob's Ladder. A story woven around a narrative lie, Jacob's Ladder is the story of a man coming to terms with PTSD after the Vietnam War, seeing nightmarish hallucinations around the city after returning home from his deployment. Or at least that's what you're led to believe. Actually a representation of purgatory, or at least some space between life and death, Jacob's Ladder is really a look at moving on into the afterlife, with Jacob himself succumbing to his battle wounds after desperately fighting to live for most of the film's runtime. Much like The Sixth Sense, Jacob's Ladder focuses its lie on its viewer experience, pulling the rug out at the last moment to change the movie into an entirely new beast by the time the credits roll. Number 6, Resident Evil Retribution. While the whole Paul W.S. Anderson Resident Evil series is based on the lie of taking a video game title and spinning out a film franchise that feels entirely unrelated, Resident Evil Retribution comes top of the pile for creating a world comprised of simulations. Alice and her zombie-busting pals find themselves stuck in an underground facility designed to play out the effects of the T-Virus in public spaces, with grand imaginings of infected cities like Tokyo and Moscow standing between them and their escape. This is a film that celebrates its fakery and visual lies at every single turn, diving into all sorts of strange subplots to throw viewers off before reveling in its utterly insane concept to the fullest degree. Perhaps the biggest lie is that Retribution's just a big, dumb action horror movie with very little to offer. Number 5, The Gift. 
literally a plot built on a lie. The gift wouldn't exist at all as central character and total prick Simon not toyed with the truth when he was younger. Off with a more subtle shade of horror, the gift shows Simon as a man haunted by his mistakes, but so desperate not to admit to them that he loses everything in the process. One of the biggest mistakes pertains to Gordo, who at one point attended the same school as Simon. For no other reason than cruelty and spite, and just because he could, Simon told everyone that Gordo was molested by another boy, which resulted in Gordo being bullied and being attacked by his own bigoted father, who even tried to set him on fire, causing Gordo's life to spiral out of control. Essentially, the gift ends up being Gordo's revenge for the pain and trauma he didn't deserve, as Simon tries to hide the truth of his actions in order to preserve the comfortable life he's built for himself. And thankfully, he fails. Number 4. Friday the 13th, The Final Chapter of course, in horror, final often means anything but final. Case in point, Friday the 13th, the final chapter. The fourth Friday the 13th movie, the plan actually was for the franchise to end with the final chapter. Then again, this is a franchise that was previously set to end with Friday the 13th Part 3. However, the success of the final chapter meant Paramount's push for another film. And before you know it, Jason Voorhees had a further six solo movies, taking the iconic killer from Crystal Lake to New York to space before there was a crossover with the Elm Street franchise whose own final Friday movie wasn't quite so final, and then Friday the 13th was rebooted in 2009. So while Corey Feldman's Tommy Jarvis hacked Jason to death at the end of the final chapter, this was far from the um, final chapter. Number 3. It Comes at Night It Comes at Night decided to play a dangerous game by advertising a film that doesn't actually exist, manipulating its marketing to seem as if some inescapable monster would be preying on the remnants of humanity. What actually came out when the film finally dropped was a rumination on human emotion instead, and some people didn't like paying to see a rumination on human emotion. The misleading marketing gimmick is one that always divides audiences at the best of times, with some desperate to get a full sense of a film before committing to seeing it, and others wanting to to go in totally blind to be surprised. At the end of the day though, It Comes at Night built its whole prospective audience up on trailers for a different film to what actually screened, and many called out the process as an undesirable industry tactic they didn't want to see again. Good thing Hereditary didn't do anything of that sort, eh? Number 2. Troll 2 Hey, nobody said the movies on this list had to be good, right? Scraping the bottom of the barrel and hitting that so bad it's brilliant vibe, Troll 2's massive lie is that it's not actually a sequel. Much like, say, Open Water 2 Adrift was a standalone movie that had a sequel digit slapped on it to help its chances at the box office, Goblins apparently wasn't all that much of a sell, even if the movie does centre on those creatures rather than any actual trolls. Plus, like, Troll wasn't even particularly good itself, so the logic of positioning Goblins as a troll sequel is just all a bit questionable. Still, famed for its ridiculous acting and dire storytelling, Troll 2 is a somewhat goofy treat if you go in with an open mind and some serious beef with vegetarians. Number 1. The Haunted in Connecticut 2 Ghosts of Georgia Where to start here? The first Haunted in Connecticut is an absolute mess from concept to execution, with the so-called true story it's based on being barely true in the first place, as the haunting of the Snedeka family is believed to lie largely be a work of fiction. So we've already got a first movie that's taken liberties with its source material, and that source material isn't even accurate in the first place. And then we have a sequel to a falsified story turned into a sensational Hollywood fodder. The Haunted in Connecticut 2 makes exactly the same mistakes in basing itself very loosely on the true story once again. Also, as a nice little cherry on the big old crappy cake here, Connecticut and Georgia are two different states, making this all the more stupid, as we are if you sat through this film.